Bitcoin just went from bad to worse, and we're going to go over it here now. So, Future Geo, put it on the screen. I've been saying for a couple weeks now that Bitcoin looks absolutely terrible, okay? And you know what? My last couple updates, though they have been spot on, they've also been pretty much the exact same thing. And today's almost going to be the exact same thing as well, but it's going to have a little bit of a twist, okay? And like I said, Bitcoin has gone from bad to worse. So, let's go over it. It's no surprise that we've been in a macro range the macro range for quite some time. I'm not even going to edit that out. We've been in a macro range for quite some time, okay? And we have started to finally break down below the low. Now, in the last few videos that I made, the last couple at least, I've been talking about how I think it was unlikely for us to have stopped in between um, this point and this point here, I absolutely said that I don't think that the low is in, that we were going to be coming down for this low, and we actually did come down to that low. Now, the thing that is the same as the last videos that's a little bit different in this video is our four-hour time frame. I mentioned this. It is not very difficult. In this regard, things have still not changed, and let's go over it. So the four-hour time frame, I've been saying that until your four-hour structure breaks bullishly, there is absolutely zero point to be talking about going to all-time highs or anything above that. There is zero chance of it. You can't get to all-time high unless the four-hour time frame flips bullishly, and it hasn't flipped bullishly. Actually, quite the contrary, Bitcoin has been showing extreme amounts of weakness. And so now I want to talk about where the next levels that you need to be paying attention are to be actually bullish. And I want to say this, okay? For the first time ever... Not ever, but for the first time, Twitter has now started to flip bearish for me, okay? My algorithms. Now, I've asked some polls, and I'm like, when we were up here, I'm like, what do you guys see? People were saying bearish, bearish, bearish this whole way down, and I wasn't seeing any bears the whole way down. I was seeing bullish, just nonstop, did you buy the dip, did you buy the dip, I can't buy the dip. Now, I have finally started to see the, the slightest bit of bearish sentiment, which is, I mean, a good thing for if you're bullish, because people tend to be incorrect. However, the uh, the amount of like crazy that people were at the top, which if you're one of them, you're fucking nuts. But the amount of crazy that people were at the top does not even come to amount the same amount that they were that they are bearish now. Okay, so my point is, is although I'm starting keyword starting to see bearish sentiment, that doesn't mean that we can't bleed a hell of a lot more down to the downside. Okay, so let's go over the four hour time frame. I kept it very simple before, and we're gonna keep it very simple today. Four-hour structure is as follows, okay? This is your four-hour structure. This is undeniable. This is non-negotiable. If you don't like it, go to another channel that's going to lie to you. This is the four-hour time frame. So right now, your four-hour high resides currently at almost 64K. We're going to say 64K for easy number. Oh, sorry, sorry. I lied, I lied, I lied, I lied. Uh, what number is this here? I'm sorry. That was a little goof there. Okay. So right now, your four-hour high is at 58,800 on the dot, okay? 588 zero zero is your four hour high and i said there's no reason to get macro bullish until your four hour flips bullish which is true now the reason why bitcoin got from bad to worse is upon breaking that low once again we actually created a lower high on the four hour time frame however this lower high that we did on the four hour isn't really what i would call like the cleanest market structure, okay? Keep in mind, we are looking at this in a macro point of view right now. And if you zoom out, you can't really see like a nice swift move with this four hour time frame. okay? Like it, it's, it's very condensed. It's only two candles to the upside. We didn't really trade higher for a significant amount of time before rolling over and dumping down, which innately is a bearish sign in itself, but we didn't really get that. And so... The reason why Bitcoin is now from bad to worse is because the bad was that Bitcoin needed to flip four hour bullishly and it has failed to do so on multiple occasions. The reason why it's worse now is because for me, okay, for me, I think that in order for us to re regain our bullish sentiment or expect higher prices, we need to actually flip this number, which is now give or take 64K, okay? And the reason for that is, like I said, this is not a, a, a clean move. Like, how do we, if we take the low again, for example, let me just give you an example. If we take the low again, then you'd have a clean move, all right? Nice, clean waves up and down, higher highs and higher lows, or lower highs and lower lows in this case. That's what we want to see. Though this is valid four-hour structure, 
it's not going to give you the most amount of confidence to say, okay, we're going to all-time highs. Now, keep in mind in the last video, I updated you in that we have this weekly uh, order block down here at the lows and how I still don't even think that this is going to hold, but we did end up front running this weekly order block. And so right now, based on the four hour time frame, based on the fact that we need to close candles above the four hour to flip bullishly, I actually think that we're going to continue to range. And I'm going to explain why. Number one, we front ran this guy, okay? I don't think that we're not going to come to this. I absolutely think, like I said over here, that I absolutely think we're going to come and take this low. I absolutely think we are going to see a 53K Bitcoin. I do think we're going to see it. I think it's undeniable. I don't see any world in which we don't come and tap 53. And like I said in the last video, I actually think we're going to lose 53 and we're going to tap into the 40s, okay? Could you SFP this low and hit this daily order block like we talked about in the last video? If you haven't seen it, go click it, go watch it. Then uh, yeah, we could. We could get an SFP like this. We talked about that all in the last video. I'm not going to go over it today, but... Because your four hour low, a uh, high rather, because your four hour high is here, but now the new number that I'm watching for is up here of for the 12 hour plus high. I think we're gonna, we're likely, we're more likely to continue to range. And what happens when you range? You should be always looking for a Wyckoff accumulation model where this would be your tap one. So perhaps we come in, we take this high, we SFP the four hour high into this order block, perhaps. Okay, I know I'm doodling, but just, you know, use your imagination. Get with it here. Okay, and then we are, in my opinion, at this point, likely to just continue to range. And whenever you're continuing to range on these higher term time frames, especially, and you have these zones just beneath you, we should be watching for our Wyckoff accumulation model where you could either get a Model 1 or a Model 2. Model 1 is where your second tap is lower than your first tap. Well, actually, both of them are that. Model 1 is where your third tap is even lower than your second tap. And model two accumulation is when your third tap is higher. How do we know that? Well, I'll update you when that time comes, if we get down to these lows. But for now, this is what I'm looking at right now. I don't think that um, people are, I don't think that people should be bullish right now, not in the macro, not in the slightest. Also, I want to just add one thing. This move to the upside based on CVD was extreme bearish CVD. Um... It wasn't bear CVD, but we didn't have the follow through that, that we needed to push higher, okay? We didn't really get the follow through that we needed, and it was on a decrease of open interest. In other words, it was just shorts getting squeezed. Well, guys, the shorts have officially been squeezed, and there's no follow through. So Bitcoin is once again showing weakness. That's not to say that it can't come up and, and uh, SFP that four-hour high, as I just indicated, but in my opinion, we are more probable than not to just continue to range here or perhaps... This is going to be the new local range, for example, where we fill the highs of the range before rolling over. I don't exactly know how high we're going to go, for example, but, you know, we are essentially keeping an eye out on, uh, on all possibilities here. And I am keeping in mind that I don't, like for me, I don't think the low is in. And although Twitter and whatever else are becoming a little bit more bearish, I don't think it's enough bearish sentiment. And I still think that people are too bullish, okay? I still think, like, people are still saying, di just because I'm seeing bearish sentiment doesn't mean I'm not still seeing, did you buy the dip? Did you buy the dip? And in my opinion, when they no longer joke about it, right? When they no longer are posting the McDonald's memes and everything else, like, it's true pain, that, in my opinion, is when the low is in. Anyways, guys, that's the update for today. Um, again, you know, we, we've gone down, we've gone up. Not really much has changed, minus... Now we have more resistance above us, and I'm going to be very frank with you. Who's frank? I'm going to be very frank with you. This buy to sell looks very strong of a buy to sell, okay? So, again, in order for us to start talking about the liquidity that's up here, which we absolutely have, we need to start seeing some really high time frames flip bullishly, and in order for that to happen, you probably need to range and consolidate a little bit longer. So, that's what I'm going to leave you with, guys. All of my affiliate links are in the description down below. Shouts out to the sponsor of the channel, Market Cypher. Shouts out to my exchanges that I trade on, Mexi, KSEX, and Blowfin. And uh, yeah, I mean, guys, I give you guys these updates. And lately, I've been keeping it more simple than not. And simple has been working out ever so wonderfully, okay? Simple has absolutely been working out. We called um, a potential long from here on the low this morning in the VIP Discord. I did not take it, but, you know... I. 
I said I wanted these lows to go and uh, we called shorts as well. So, I mean, if you're interested in that, the link is also in the description. Guys, I'll see you on live probably tomorrow. I'm working on some side projects. We're changing VIP up. We're rebranding. I'm doing things that nobody else is doing. So I've been working on a couple, few things behind the scenes. That's why the video updates have been, you know, every other day or every three days or whatever, because on top of the fact that Bitcoin is not really doing anything, um, it's very simple, guys. Just follow the structure. And right now, there's no reason to get aggressively bullish. That's it. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.